This event is sponsored by Miro. Miro is the online whiteboard platform where product teams can work together effectively. If you don't know where to start, it's packed with over 50 templates for product teams. Whether you need a Kanban, mind map, retrospective, product roadmap, or user story map, we've got you covered. Try it for free. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me today. My name is Matt Ressman, and I'm going to talk to you about big company strategy on a small company budget. So a little bit about me. Um, I graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering and have been uh, largely involved in product development in a variety of different roles. I have managed my own company, um, focused on new product development and delivery. I've worked in startup environments and in very large corporate environments as a product manager. You know, one, one thing I've realized is regardless of si the size of the company, the end goal of the product manager is to define, develop, and deliver high quality and profitable products. Right. However, the biggest difference in working in each of these companies was the different resources at your disposal. So in the end, a large company has very abundant resources, and in smaller companies, you need the same capabilities, but you just have fewer resources in a smaller team to get things done. However, both approaches can be incredibly successful, as you've seen, as there are very large companies and very small companies do exist to this day. So let's start by looking at the product manager role here very quickly. Regardless of the size of the organization, you know, the product manager has a very broad role. And that's what makes it very interesting. Right? You have to identify new market opportunities. You have to define a product to fill these gaps. You have to get cross-company buy-in, identify and align the resources, and then in the end, deliver a profitable product within the market determined schedule. And all of this must be done within the resources constraints of an organization. Right? So if we look at the different sizes of organizations, like a large organization versus a small organization, you know, it's based on the number of resources. The more resources you have, the more complex your organization. Right? In a large organization, there are teams of individuals who work together to address the main challenges related to product development and delivery. The teams may be distributed across many regions. They may be focused on multiple projects. Or they could also be a very highly focused on a specific aspect of a much larger project. Additionally, their objectives may impact multiple organizations. Of course, the teams are multidisciplined and are often focused on driving their core technology. In large organizations, there can be main distractions due to differing priorities of various stakeholders across the organization. And in turn, this will defocus some of the team members from the objectives that are key to your project. You know, this results in the increased opportunity for mistakes and errors. To help mitigate these issues, large companies have developed numerous tools and processes to identify what is desired, you know, the product definition that you put together, establish project management processes to track and ensure an on-time delivery, and they have significant resources or money to help mitigate the problems and, and ensure a smooth product delivery. With all this complexity, it leads to a very um, interesting and complex environment for the product manager to navigate. Now, if we contrast this to a smaller company, you know, there are fewer individuals. So each individual must play a role and their responsibilities must be shared. You know, each mem member must be nimble and must be able to take over whatever work is thrown their way. Often the tactic is do whatever you need to do to help the team be successful, right? This can be a really fun and fast moving environment to work in. This is one of the items that draws people to work towards startups. It's one of the reasons why I like working on them so much. You learn a great deal in a short period of time. You know, it's similar to learning to sail in a small boat rather than a yacht. You, know, you learn faster in the small boat because the effects of what you do have an immediate consequence versus a large yacht, let's say a cruise ship, which takes miles to turn or come to a stop. So when you're in a small company with limited budgets, you, know, you have greater challenge in meeting the same product delivery objectives with much fewer people. You have tighter and less flexible schedules, and you have more restrictive financial resources. I found that in small companies, the areas of maintaining alignment in the organization, understanding and managing people's capabilities, maintaining delivery timelines, and creative fiscal management are critical foci for the product manager. So let's dig into each one of these a little more deeply. Let's start with alignment. 
And by alignment, I mean that everybody is working towards the exact same problem. The problem, or in the product manager's case, the product being delivered. Because the, the broad responsibilities of the product manager, as we discussed earlier, maintaining alignment in the organization is, key, is our key focus. You can have a perfect game-changing product, but if the team is not delivering the same product, it has little chance of success. Alignment is critical in both large and small organizations. In small organizations, maintaining alignment is sometimes easier because it's smaller, more focused group of people. But as in the sailing example, mix-ups are much more impactful to the end result in a small organization. The missteps are a much greater percentage of the overall effort, and you have fewer resources to spare to help mitigate the effects of these missteps. You know, when issues occur in a large organization, you can quickly throw additional resources to help it recover. In small organizations, you just don't have this luxury because finding resources is a challenge. So as a PM, you, know, you want to target to establish a means of developing and maintaining alignment as quickly and as simply as possible. Quickly so you can get everyone on the same page and simply so you can maintain alignment as changes occur. As many of you know, the originally defined product is typically not what is shipped. In my experience, this is always the case. The change in the product definition to launch a better product is great. When changes occur, the entire team needs to understand clearly what those changes are and how it impacts their work. You know, if they have issues or concerns, you need to discuss them up front. As you know and should know, issues just don't disappear. In the end, they get resolved. Eventually, you know, the issues will pop up if you don't resolve them, so getting them figured out and out of the way sooner and later is, is best. Right? So establishing simple tools will help make your job easier. Verbose is not good. Make your documentation only as long as it must be, and make it as simple as it can be. More pages and unnecessary complexity will slow down the organization as they work to absorb the new information. And this can become sources of mistakes as information gets misinterpreted or misplaced. You know, so just keep it simple so it's very easy for people to reference and understand. This is also a good way to foster communication. People seldom discuss the points in a 30-page document. However, they will review and discuss the points in a two-page document. You, you know, it's key to seek people's inputs, and in doing this, you'll ensure that your product is defined properly, it's not misdefined, and make sure you have a good understanding of what's going on, and that the team understands the specifications and can execute to those. And if there are gaps, in the end, you'll always be able to address them, and eventually you recover. However, with the more complex documents, it's harder to find the gaps, it takes much longer to recover as you try to dig to find where that issue was. So keeping it simple and very easy is a, a, a very nice way to keep alignment. So as you're trying to keep alignment, you're actually trying to align people, right? People are what make the company. You know, a large organization is basically just more people, but with that comes additional teams who use varying methods to achieve different objectives across the company. In very large companies, you have to form cross-company partnerships, and you know, this creates even more complexity. You, know, you find this in small companies, but to a much lesser extent. Small companies are often comprised of much fewer individuals, and each one contributes largely to the company's success. And because you have fewer people, they tend to be more vocal, they have stronger opinions and their ideas, and all of these are very important to keep in mind because you're not in a small company, you just don't have people hanging around, right? In a large company, you hear this thing of people falling through the cracks or getting lost in the shuffle. In a small company, that's just not the case. Everybody plays a key, key role. So as you're developing your product approach, the key thing to remember is every individual is important to address. Each individual has something that's unique to them. And as compared to a large company where you look at the overall team's capabilities, you want to look at that individual's capabilities. You know, in a large company, if there's a gap, they'll find someone to fill it. In a small company, a luxury typically isn't there. So you want to know how people work and how, what gaps they can fill so when there are issues, you know who you can lean on in those situations. You know, additionally, at a small company, each individual you know, is very significant to the impact and success of the overall product. And therefore, your product definition should take into account each individual and what they can bring to the table. If there are gaps, you're not going to be able to fill them. You know, if you have three requirements and you only have people who can fill two of those, two of the three, you know, you're going to have to find more resources to fill these gaps. And in a small company, that just doesn't happen very often or very easily, right? So make sure that as you look at your feature set and determine if that feature or functionality is really important. And if you can't find someone to fill that, 
Maybe it's time to deprioritize it or look at a future release. The other thing to keep in mind is that the impact of more junior individuals are just as important as the leads. Just because someone is more junior does not mean that they're not critical. They bring a lot of value to the team and their skill sets and capabilities should be considered. However, their seemingly minor mistakes can cause very large issues. This is different in a large organization because you have teams to support these missteps. In the small organizations, they're much more highly noted. Of course, I'm not leaving out leadership and key architects here. You know, they need to be considered as well. Um, but their inputs are typically addressed, you know, during your product strategy meetings and their position, you know, just lends them to being a part of part of those discussions. So aligning individuals on the team, ensuring you can get their input and addressing their concerns is key. In a small company, since you can't count on the team members, when you can count the team members on one, maybe two hands, right? You need to look at what everybody can bring to the table and account for each individual. The two things I like to keep in mind is, one, to keep alignment, like work to get to know your people, work to get to know the team. Because if you can tailor your messaging to address each individual, you'll resonate even more with them and you'll have an easier time keeping alignment in the long run. The other thing to recognize is look for the hidden talents of people. Right? I, you know, the software engineer who knows how to build hardware. I was working in a company, we had a software component, we had a hardware component, and our lead software engineer um, happened to have worked in his, I think it was his grandfather's shop. And he was incredibly good at mechanical fabrication. And he ended up having better hands-on skills than our lead mechanical engineer because of this background and this talent that he had. And if it hadn't been for me going to lunch with him and just getting to know him, we would never have found this. And in the end, him and I were able to work together to let, deliver some very highly successful hardware products. So look for those hidden talents. You never know how they're going to impact your overall product. So the second key item is time. Time is the most valuable commodity in large and small organizations. It's very hard to get more, and you seemingly never have enough. And as with people in a small organization, time ends up being a much more valued commodity. And it always feels like there's less of it, right? You're having you have more certain deadlines because you're waiting on the VC to give you more money. If you don't deliver on time, you don't get your next round of funding. There's market time. If you miss the market, it's much harder to get your product, product out there. So, and then also in the smaller company, time is consume more rapidly by missteps that we discussed earlier. In a large company, you know, time aspects of our project are the focus of the project manager, not the product manager. In many instances, you have a team of project managers, right? Their objective is to develop a schedule and keep the organization on track. They use all sorts of different tools, Microsoft projects, spreadsheets. There are many tracking tools out there, right? So why do com large companies need this? It goes back to complexity. Right? Large companies have a very complex organizational structure, a lot of people that they're trying to keep aligned, and it becomes very difficult to do. So you need a team of people to keep everybody on track. When we move to a smaller company, you know, you typically don't have a project manager. And because of that, the product manager typically takes over this role. You know, we know what needs to get done, we have a sense of all the key players, we know the order of delivery, we have to develop the requirements. So it makes sense to have a product manager fill this role. But I have key three points for a product manager when looking at how to play that project management role. The first one is your target, while you are trying to build a product, your, your key targets are not the end product. It's the next milestone. Right? If you miss a milestone, the work to recover for that one milestone is much easier than trying to do a bunch of recovery at the end. Right? So if you miss a milestone, you can spend some time you know, doing long nights once a week for a few weeks as compared to doing three very long crunch nights right at the end of product introduction. So focus on your milestones and make sure you're delivering to them. The sooner you catch that you've missed one, the easier it's going to be to catch up. Second, within your schedule of milestones and deliveries, make sure you assign ownership. This is key to creating alignment, right? It's all too often what happens where someone says, it wasn't me, or I thought they were delivering that. Um, this can be easily remedied by a simple schedule. Right, this helps foster discussion within the group and it ensures that the proper product is being delivered. It also helps to find and highlight relationships between the various features being developed. You may think as a product manager that you understand all the different relationships between the features, but the developers who are actually building those features and digging into the dirty, dirty details of how it all comes together, they'll understand it even more. So if you can get them talking um, about this, 
early on, you'll have a much easier time to find the schedule and understanding what needs to be delivered when. And by defining ownership, this will make sure people know they need to be discussing it. And lastly, you'll find this theme, simpler is better. Right? As I mentioned before, too much information does not get reviewed. And it'll be, it'll be harder for you to maintain. Right? And if it's hard to maintain, it's going to become outdated, it's going to become unused. You, know, you have to remember your focus is being the product manager, not the project manager. So you need to be looking at all facets of the product. So I like to keep it very simple with how I manage my, my project timelines. I simply just use an Excel sheet. Microsoft Project and these other items are just a lot of, a lot of information, great tools, but in the end, get overly complex for working in a small company. So you know, the key thing in a small company is keep it simple. Large organizations you know, need these specialized tools because of the different stakeholders and the complexities across organizational alignment. Um, you know, and then with in working with a team, if you want people to understand your schedule and look at it, keep it simple, right? I typically take what I have in my Excel sheet or in my Word doc or a simple um, uh, slideshow presentation, and I translate it onto a whiteboard or I print them out and I post it in an area where everybody can see it. And that way people aren't trying to shuffle through and find that email or find that shared doc in, in, in your collaboration software. Right? You have it in a clearly well-defined place, then everyone's going to see it, and they'll always be looking at it. And when a change happens, note it and make it obvious. Don't erase the whiteboard, cross up the idea, and write the new item that's changed in there. And in the end, everybody will stay informed, and you'll have a much easier time managing your, managing your project and keep the alignment amongst the team. So the last thing that separates out a large company versus a small company, pretty obvious, it's the money. A small company has fewer funds. A large company has a lot larger funds. Therefore, you have more resources. However, the key thing I want to express here from the product management standpoint is that while more information is always better, it's not always best for your product decisions. Right? You have more money. That means you have more information. You get more data. You can do more UX research. You can... Get, you can uh, go off and find more surveys. However, in the end, you can be constantly analyzing data and you can succumb yourself to over analysis of the data. Right? So you, the key thing is to step back and look at the key deliverables that you're trying to get within that small organization. You'll look at it and try to understand when you've begun an, overanalyzing the data or when you're chasing that one piece of data that you know, could help solve some small little piece of information that you wish you had, but at the overall impact of the project, maybe it's not as significant. So don't get stuck on analysis paralysis. Don't focus on the data too much. The key thing is you as a product manager, one of the reasons why you're in this role is you have really good, solid product intuition. Right? You understand the vision of the product that you're trying to go to. You know what problems you're trying to solve. That intuition is there. That's what us product managers have. That's what sets us apart from other individuals in other organizations of the company. So you know, focus on being the product manager not the data analyst, right? Fall back on your intuition, run with it, and you'll be successful. Right? The key thing to remember here is new products are always changing. You're going to have that next release. You're going to have that next revision, right? There's a second iteration planned. When I'm working on a new product, I usually have an extra document that's sitting there keeping track of what I want to do on the second or third iteration or things I want to look at. This is a very helpful way for me to get my mind off of the idea I wish I had and the problems I could solve later so I can focus on the product delivery at hand. So while you don't have all the resources in the world of a small company, you do, have a, you do have a lot of knowledge and people you can rely on to help you make those product decisions and then learn and iterate quickly. And that will help you be able to have a more successful and fluid product in the end. So overall, there are a few key takeaways for working at a small organization. Number one is alignment. As we discussed, all the elements, you know, people, time, and money are all impacted by the alignment organization. As a product manager, your role is to ensure that you're, everyone is working towards the same deliverable. You know, this is not a simple task by any means, but recognizing the key challenges up front will help you work within the resources and time constraints that you have and will help you be very successful in your small company environment. Number two is people. Each individual, when you look at a person in a small company, is their own team. While smaller teams do pose their challenges, of, you know, it does simplify communication alignment. But make sure you're considering all of the individuals regardless of their title or position. Right? In a small company, everybody is there for a reason, and they have a key role to play. 
And it's, there's no unimportant roles in the small company. So look at each person, understand those talents that they have, and look at how you can use those to make a more highly successful product. Third is identify your customer. And what I mean by this is clearly identifying what you want to build and why. It does not have to be exactly right the first time. You're not going to have all the data you want. Markets are you're incredibly complex and are constantly changing. By identifying that usable design and deliver it in a very high quality way and begin iterating quickly, in the end you'll be very successful. And lastly, keep it simple. Simple documents showing your key ideas, ensure that you have more efficient and simple communications and the team will understand those in the end. This will save you a lot of time across the board. And you'll be able to focus on the areas where you have more impact. And remember, as a product manager, you're not getting, you get measured on what you deliver, not on the complexity of your documents. And if you're measured on the complexity of documents, you probably want to be working elsewhere. So your, your goal, role as a product manager is to show impact and deliver really cool, high quality, awesome products. So um, I, that's what I have today. I hope uh, you're able to glean something interesting. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn there, uh, Matthew Resman. Thank you.